creator of many puzzle games you might have heard of, like Understand and 14 Minecraft Variants, and also uh, 14 Minecraft Variants 2, has released a new game called Crayon Computer. Now, there are no graphics in this game. It already looks overwhelming, but the goal is actually pretty simple. We have to accept all inputs. We draw stuff here, so we can draw like that, and then attempt to make it fall. Well, well don't they... Okay, anyway, it seems like the yellow balls appear regardless. So, okay, so clearly we wanted to all accept everything, right? We just need to draw a line that's like that. And now I don't know, like, like what they choose. Like, could we get different shapes <laughs> or something? Yep, yep, we got a square. All right, so you see the idea of the game. We are just, like, distinguishing. Like, later levels, there'll be there's going to be stuff that distinguishes accept versus reject. There's also optimization in this game. We'll see if this ever becomes a series before we try that, as it's going to take a while. But anyway, accept input from right, reject input from left. So basically, something like this, right? Reject. And this one we accept. Probably next is going to be a square, which might not work. There, there, okay. Cool. Next level, accept middle-sized object, re reject large and small ones. So let's look at the test cases. They're all going to come from the center. Hmm. So I'm already imagining something like that, except no, we need to center it. Why isn't erasing easy? And why is there no preview of each test case that I can see with a dotted line or something? I, I mean, I could stall it, perhaps. Hmm. Both the middle and the large react by going to the left with that one. Apparently, Z-Cat holds the record on this level with only 120 cost. How is that even possible? Like, a dot is already 101 cost. <laughs> hmm, so... I don't know, like, for me, it seems like... You want the middle object to get hit by those? Like, I'm not sure. Nope. Actually... Hmm, I'm thinking about this. Like that, the small hits that one. I hope the large hits the one on the left. No, wait, that's wrong? No, that's because it's too big. Hold on. So I'm hoping the small hits that. The medium is able to hit this ball. So, okay, I'm trying again. With that one being, like, closer. So small goes there. Medium goes there and hits left. Now large, hopefully... <laughs> Alright. <laughs> okay, I mean, now let's check if the squares work. That one looks fine. Five looks fine. Okay, this look this is good, right? Now I just run the whole thing. Middle hits uh there. Large ones go to the right. Small ones go to the right. Middle ones go left. Okay. So yeah, I mean, I bet that's actually a very common solution, though. Apparently one of the tools also is a dynamic object. So, optimization-wise, this might also be interesting. It's the same kind of cost, but it, like, it falls down with gravity, just like the test objects. Hmm. <laughs> it could be interesting. I don't know. I don't know. This, this could be the way that people do it. Like, because just adding another object makes things much more unpredictable. They don't let you cheat by, like... Doing that and then... No, no, of course not. It'd be hilarious, though, to be able to ch cheat wrapping around the screen like that. Okay, so maybe this is too much uh, screwing around. <laughs> I'll just go to the next level where I accept the longer object but reject the shorter one. Honestly, I'm not... <sighs> Why don't we just, like, name the categories of the stuff on the bottom? Isn't that way easier to understand? Anyway, so they seem to be taller. No, no, wait. Hmm. Well, luckily, we only have these four objects to work with and to to um have to deal with, you know. So it's it's interesting because like, how do you adequately interrupt the large object? We could have it by default hit the reject, and then is it possible to make a, like a slide with a dynamic object on it to interrupt? Well, th that goes too slow, but like it kind of worked. Okay, my new idea is the three dots. Yes, finally an explanation to the three dots. So. It goes, hits that, and goes between them, but for a long object, it hits both of them and then slides left. So here we go. It also happens to work for these as well. Yeah, okay. 
cool. Now, the next level is called Rotate, which is a little odd. It's like adding one. So, like, input one, something that falls from one goes to two. Two goes to three. Three goes to four. It also rotates, so four wants to go all the way back to one. That four to one is going to be challenging. <laughs> it seems like you could just do dot, dot, dot for the other ones, but for four, it might be hard. Dot. And dot. But what about this one? Well, probably it would be cool if this one rode on the three dot. Maybe we'd somebody use like the curve tool or something to make a really smooth slope for the four. I'm not completely sure. Actually, this curve that I just made... It... I think it's... Yeah, it just gets there. Well, I guess the others are a bit straightforward then, if I can do that. Hmm. And then... Yep. Well, there it is. Now, if I had to get... Whoa, I didn't mean to undo that. I think one and two is where the optimization would probably be. Where two hits, like... Like, one takes a very smooth and slow downfall into two, while two hits the very edge of it, probably. I don't know exactly how to make that work. Maybe something like that. The problem is, like, you see, that works, but I bet four might have a problem. Hmm. I can move this, right? There's the hotkey to move, which is nice, because that is, it doesn't affect cost at all. Now, but the problem is the freaking... the the extra height will make it hit the three. I can drag this off? No, I can't. Okay. <laughs> Damn it. Okay, what about this? This one hits two. Oh, no, it, wait, what the? I swear it worked. <laughs> well, anyway, let's just move that. Okay. Now two, did you, did you hit the edge? No, you don't! What? Number one on this level is 340. Now, the sad thing is that the best ones for the line are the ones that take forever. Like, <laughs> I'm confident in this idea. Okay. And then two, please hit the side. Okay. And that doesn't interrupt four. If there's any more cost savings, it's going to be about the four, probably. <laughs> Thank you for being consistent. Okay. All right, I'm now in fourth place. Well, next level is called Flip. So I, wait, I, mean, I can just draw the... So one goes to four, two goes to three, three goes to... Three goes to two, and four goes to one. That's the... That's the goal here. Huh, but this doesn't this seem like you make two curves and that's it? Like, it seems like it. it's that easy. Although maybe the execution won't be easy, but it just feels like that's what you do. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Why was this afterwards again? You call this programming season two. Yeah, I'm already ninth on this one. Who wants to fiddle with curve minutia? Oh, there's a second chapter. Okay. What do you mean density? Density. <laughs> wow. You couldn't even be bothered to like give them a different color to show their which one is the denser variation. Or to put a number on the ball like, that says 1G or something. Also, couldn't be bothered has a more uh, academic name. It's C B A. I can barely tell the difference. Even on different test cases. <laughs> like, I understand in theory that they one of them might fall faster than the other, but I can't even see it. I mean, how embarrassing would it be if I labeled them wrong? <laughs> Even adding a new dynamic object, it seems like they fall at the same rate. Okay, so I made like a new, like, object. And you can see there's a big difference in here. This is the normal case. It falls, but with the heavier objects, it like levers up much more noticeably. And here's the one that's very light. So, maybe that behavior is the one we need. Which would force you to use a dynamic object, which is a little weird if like, they don't highlight this as the relevant thing, but whatever, I guess. Uh, this is not a game for the uncurious. Oh, so this is insane. Look at test case four. This is a low density object. No, no, wait. Goddamn non-deterministic physics. I swear that I, I just had a case where this went to the right. Anyway, it'd be funny to win this with 101. <laughs> so, trying with this. Please fall. There it is. <laughs> now... Yeah, this is not the turn. Oh my god. Sucks. They're clearly not going at the same angle each time. At least this one kicks this down in a really satisfying way. Dude, what the hell? The heavier... 
the heavier objects get bounced left, but still have rightward spin? <laughs> okay, so I moved it slightly, and now the this is the normal one, <laughs> which is lighter, uh, and so it got the rightward spin. Hopefully it doesn't freaking lose it. Do not... It came to a standstill on me. Oh my god. But the funny thing is that this one works fine, the, the really light one. Maybe the non-deterministic physics will help. Maybe there'll be a run where the first test case spins to the right enough. <laughs> Slightly to the left again. Okay, but now the test is going to be whether 2 and 3 are able to go to the left. Nope. Sucks because it worked for the for test case 2 and 3. The old solution that I had where a freaking 1 trolled me worked for 2 and 3 perfectly. It's so likely that optimizing this game is like these small pixel maneuvers <laughs> now watch two and three not get it Ugh. okay so i've made this now so i'm trying to use the kick but that did not work at all Ugh. i'm trying to use the idea that it will like the heavier object might kick this part and act like and act like a lever towards itself. I don't even know how this happened. Like, this this only works for the first one, pushing it to the right. And, like, left for all these. And also left for the 0.5 one somehow. <laughs> Did I just make a boomerang? <laughs> what the? <laughs> I hate this level. All right, I built this. I don't know how people do this with, like, freaking 106 which is just like 106 would just be like that or something or even smaller like 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 it's it's 106 is like nothing but anyway so this at least this is fun to look at like it completely ignores this like but it, on the heavier one it bounces instead and on the lighter ones it just it completely ignores it anyway Next level, now we are accepting object of higher friction. So is this like, this better be a more visible thing than the freaking last one was. So if we look at a line, well, the problem is it bounces so hard that it's hard to see if it does anything. So it's probably about its speed when it's gliding down. Uh, if we can make that even happen. Wow, you can barely tell that the <laughs> and plus if it stalls how are we even gonna see it oh god <laughs> couldn't you have used circles for the first friction level <laughs> like this gives this so much they're the same picture vibes actually maybe the higher frictions are the ones th yeah this is the low friction one it slides a lot okay i guess low friction slides okay so like the way i imagine it is the low friction objects um they don't like like, notice how that, uh, like, that one didn't have enough friction to slide down, therefore it had to flip. So I'm hoping to use that interaction, where I distinguish it based on how it flips. Unfortunately, it seems like one, the test case one is also using it, so I don't know. I don't want test case one to really hit that one. Hmm. Okay, I put, ugh, gosh, I hate adding extra dots, but there, there you go. Reject that. Now this one is the one that has... I, I, for real, for real? Okay, I added another dot to ruin the cost even more. <laughs> this better work for the 0.5. Uh, I mean, the 0.2 lowest friction. I hate the word friction. They should have called it slidiness. Uh, does this work? Please say it does. Oh my god. Okay. God. Alright, uh, what about this? It kind of works in... Wow, this is so inconsistent. It seriously worked a lot. <clears throat> wow. Wow. Alright, what about this? Turn. Now that one, please go a little bit... Lo 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 larger. Case 3. Okay, and case four. Okay, that works. All right, actually, do do I need to um? Well, need, but 
Is it better if I do that for the optimization? <laughs> no, because random stuff can... Ha ah, whatever, next level. Alright, time to go bouncy versus unbouncy. Which, I mean, that would be the first goddamn thing in this game that is visible. Yes, finally. <laughs> hmm. Okay, but that does lead to questions. Like, I guess... <sighs> you would just, like, want to do that. And then the bouncy ones will be able to hit that dot. But the other ones won't. Right? Yeah. So why isn't this, why isn't this the first level in this set? Instead, you have density and the other thing, which you don't, can't see. Ah, anyway. And last one. Okay. There we go. Insanely, the record for this one is also about 100. Like, 105. The next level is basically, like, the center of mass, which, I mean... <laughs> we, okay, hmm... So, the, if the center of mass is in the center, then we want to accept it and put it in the balanced category. So this leads to some real odd behavior, like here, where the center of mass is on the left, so it kind of pivots around instead of uh, really being hit into the reject pile, which also means it's stable here. Okay, I I've come up with this three dot pattern. The second one hits that and like moves in satisfyingly. There it is. What the? <laughs> delayed versus undelayed. So, test case one and two. So that the ball does not drop for these ones until like you wait like three seconds. So clearly this is about the dynamic object. Oh, that's so cool. So, hmm. It's so tempting to like add, a, add an ugly thing that will fall to the left. But that depends on if I have time to do that. Hmm. Uh, falls to the right, rather. Like, we want to have this mega curve that the first balls respect, but the later balls do not. And also, <laughs> like, this, this yellow needs to stay. That did not stay. I mean, I think the idea is... The idea is good. Like, I think we can get rid of this and replace it with like a real fixed object okay this was probably going to work though the, the curve is a bit um <laughs> visually unappealing yeah cool and there it is okay so now we have the uh, same it seemed to lay it's still delayed but now, one or three, which does seem like very arbitrary. Like, how, how are we going to make that work? I don't know, like, there's there's one idea that I've had where, like, I make some sort of boat that rocks back and forth on the correct one-second timing. Like, that's a fun idea that could work to alternate odd-even numbers, but I don't know how to get that to work, really. Alright, I, I put this thing in here. Uh, so hopefully... Like, I, I checked each case and it seems to have worked, so that one goes to accept. Now this one kind of takes the middle and then decides to land on reject. <laughs> like some sort of fortune-telling origami. <laughs> there we go. And yeah, that is uh, chapter two. All done. Uh, there is, of course, more stuff about shapes, but I think the video is long enough. This game is called Crayon Computer. Uh, so yeah, anyway, bye. Oh my god, this one is a long go.